Welcome to this presentation on ITERS. We're going to be looking at item 21 of the ITERS rating scale, which is all about math and number. And the whole idea of ITERS, as you already know, it's about, um, it's a quality assurance um, program, which looks at um, a number of criteria and measures across 32 different items in early childhood education to determine the level at which you are delivering the early years uh, service, whether it is inadequate, minimal, good, or excellent. And of course, we're all striving for excellence. So what this presentation is going to do, we're going to explore the maths and number item, which is 21. We're going to start off by just thinking about um, some good practice tips and number talk. Um, they're really tips from me, things that you can be doing and should be doing in your early years classroom to provide a good math and number provision. And by doing some of the things that I suggest will help you climb up the ITIS scale towards um, working towards that excellence grading. So as you know, inadequate number one, minimal number three, good number five, and excellent number seven. So let's start off by taking a look at some of Sammy's tips to see some of the things that I think you could be doing in your early years provision to support your math and number provision. So my first top tip is ensure that activities, toys, and resources um, are always available that can support maths and counting. So that could be shape puzzles, that could be counting blocks, that could be stacking. Use maths talk at every opportunity. You, the maths is based on a set of concepts. Um, so you have uh, spatial concepts, um, uh, number concepts, um, positional concepts and using maths talk at every opportunity, um, whether that be uh, counting, when you're cutting apples with the children, oh, I've sliced the apples. How many pieces have I cut it into? Let's see, one piece, two piece, three, or I've cut the apple in half. I'm going to cut it in half again and that's going to be a quarter. Now, shall we all eat a quarter of the apple? There's four of us and we can each have one piece. Four quarters, that's our whole apple cut into slices. These are all mathematical concepts, mathematical and number talk. That's what we want you to be doing. Lots and lots and lots and lots of number talk at every opportunity. We're going down the stairs, even if you're carrying a child with you. Let's count the stairs as we go down. One, two, or with slightly older children, let's estimate how many stairs do we think till the next landing? Who thinks 10? Who thinks five? Let's estimate. Okay, you think seven. Let's do it. One, oh, it's 11. So none of us got it right and repeat and repeat and repeat every time. Estimate, oh, here's a basket of fruit. How many apples do we think's in here? Is it five or more than five? Is it three or less than three? How many grapes are on this bunch? It's a lot of grapes. So this is all mathematical talk all mathematical talk. And just a reminder, my tip number three is that math actually incorporates number, shape, space, quantity, patterns, and sequencing. So those are all the things that you can be uh, talking about and including in your math and number provision in your early years class. If I haven't already said it, count all the time with the children. Count all the time with children. Counting out objects, counting out children, counting out 
things, counting out empty seats around the table. We've got three seats that are around the table. One, two, three. So I can take three more children to snack. Who wants to come and sit at snack with Sammy? Mila, do you want to come to one of my empty chairs? Who would like to come to another one of my empty chairs? All maths talk. All maths talk. Counting. Now I've only got two empty chairs because Mila came to sit down. Who wants to sit in one of my two empty chairs? Point out numbers and patterns to children where you see them around your early years classroom, where you see them in the wider early years environment, in the garden, in books. Point out, all. oh, that's the number five. Should we count to number five? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's the number five. And use maths as part of your daily routine. For example, in circle time, let's count how many children are here today. One, two, three, four. Touch a child as you say the number. This is called one-to-one -one correspondence. So children get that it's one number, one number name, one object. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven children in our frog's classroom today. Well, we have fifteen children in our frog's classroom. That means that some of our children are not here if there's only 11. Hmm, how many children are we missing today? Count on 12, 13, 14, 15. We've got four children missing. Who's the first one that's missing? Who can think who's not here today? Who's not here today? Yes, Alfie's not here. He's on holiday, isn't he? And I think Diptesh is sick, etc. Count, show them on your fingers as you're counting. Okay, so that's my top tips. And I've got some examples on the next slide of some fabulous language um, that you can be using, what we call maths talk or maths words. So concepts of space, above, below, on top of, next to, on the bottom of, underneath, around. The concepts of sequence, first, second, third, first, next, last, before, after, then, finally, penultimately, the concept of quantity, more than, less than, size, bigger than, smaller than, biggest, smallest, fattest, thinnest. Um, okay, so we're going to jump right in now to the uh, standard. We're going to go and look now at the um, ITER's uh, rating scale, and we're going to start off with inadequate. Here we go, up they come. So if these things... These three things are happening in your early years classroom or your early years setting. You are coming out as inadequate. And remember that it's not just about what you do as a practitioner. It's about what's happening in the classroom, what's happening in the room, what's happening amongst all the staff that are present and what experience the children are getting. It's about what the children get out, not necessarily what you as an individual put in. Okay, so this is describing an inadequate maths and counting provision in the early years classroom. So first of all, did you like my maths talk there? First of all, no appropriate maths or number materials are accessible. No maths talk is being used by the staff with the children. For example, the staff aren't counting, they're not saying shape names, they don't use quantity or size words, they're not really using nursery rhymes or singing songs containing numbers or counting. Obviously, that's all stuff that should be happening, but it's not. If those things are not going on in your early years classroom, you're coming out as inadequate a grade one. Maths talk is used in a threatening manner with any child. Stop that now. I'm going to count to three and you must stop. One, two, three. Oi, va, voi. It's not how we use maths talk. I'm going to count to five 
And if I get to five and you're still doing that, you're going to go and sit in the rest basket. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Off you go. Absolutely none of that, please. And if those kind of things are happening in your classroom, you're coming out as in, uh, inadequate. Righty, let's jump then to minimal. If your classroom is doing these three things, you are coming out, and just these three things, not beyond this, you are coming out at a number three, which is minimal for your um maths and uh, counting uh, provision in, in your early years setting. So there is some appropriate maths and number play materials that shows shape, size or number, and these are accessible. So we're talking about limited resources that support maths and mathematical development are available, but they are limited. So, for example, grasping toys or rattles with shapes or numbers, shape puzzles, toy telephones, limited range. That's our first criteria. Our second criteria for minimal, staff sometimes, not consistently, not always, not most of the time, staff sometimes talk about shape or size with the children. So point out different size dolls, name the shapes of the toys that the children are using. These are examples of what you might see at a minimal level. And our third criteria, staff sometimes point to each item as they count them for the children. One, two, three, but it's not consistent. They're not using counting enough during the day and they're not always pointing at things to make that link with one-to-one -one correspondence, one, 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 one number name, one object, okay? So counting objects in a book, counting how many children, counting number of crackers or apples being put out on the plate. Let's go to the next level. So we're skipping now up to level five, which is good. So if you're doing these things, in your uh, maths and number provision in your early years classroom, you are coming out at a good. And if you're only doing half of these things and you were doing all of the minimal things, you're coming out at a number four, which is somewhere between minimal and good. We could say, okay, maybe. Okay, so let's look at these criteria. Staff use number songs, chants, nursery rhymes, finger play, with children in an engaging way. Five little speckle frogs sat on a speckle frog eating the most delicious grub. Yum, yum. They jumped in, one jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Now there's just four speckle frogs. Four little speckle frogs sat on a speckle log eating the most delicious grub. Yum, yum. We're counting back. Five, four, three, two, one. These are songs that you can be singing all the time. There's one about ducks. Five little ducks went swimming one day over the hills far, far away. Daddy duck said, quack, 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 quack. <gasps> but only four little ducks came back. One, two, three, four. Four little ducks went swimming one day. These are the kinds of songs that we want to hear often, not just at circle time, not just at song time, but often throughout the early years classroom, especially with children that are under three. Rhymes, songs, etc. So that's what that criteria is all about. Let's look at the next criteria. There's many appropriate maths and number materials which are accessible to the children throughout the day. The third criteria, staff correctly compare shapes, amounts, or sizes. So that would be using words such as more than, less than, when referring to groups of objects, using smaller or bigger and other size words, the biggest, the smallest, the fattest, the thinnest, when referring to objects or even people. Staff count objects for children in an engaging manner. 
And this could be counting their toes. Have any of your toes dropped off? Shall we count them to make sure they're all here? One, two, three. I think they're all here. Four, five. You've got five toes on that foot. Should we check your other foot? Is there a toe missing? Games, number games, playfulness. This is called playfulness. And we want to be using number and math in a playful way with children. And, you know, counting children's toes. That should be something that's happening all the time in your baby units. Um, staff, ah, oh, yeah, we've done that. Staff count objects. Um, uh, counting toes when changing the children, uh, pointing to blocks as they're being counted, counting the slices of apple as they're going out. I'm slicing the apple. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of apple. Who wants the first piece? Again, another use of ordinal numbers there. Great. For Luna's getting the first piece. Emma's getting the second piece. Nadia is getting the third piece. So if you're doing those things in your provision, you're coming out at a good. Are you excellent? Let's have a look. These are the things that you need to be doing for an excellent rating, which is obviously number seven on the scale. And if you're doing two out of three of these things, and you've met all of the good, and you've met all of the minimal, then you're coming out just over good, let's say great, but not excellent, and you're coming out at a number six, okay? But if you're doing all three of these, then obviously you're coming out at number seven on the ITAS rating, and it is just up to seven, so seven is excellent. So let's have a look at what you need to be doing to be truly excellent. So first up, staff use maths words to describe the sequence of daily events. First, we put on our coats. Second, we go outside. And third, we play in the sandpit. Our number one job is to clean up and pick up the toys. Our number two job is to wash our hands for lunch. And our number three job is to sit down on our chairs. Shall we start with number one, boys and girls? Off we go. Staff show number of fingers when they use number talk with children. Even just through my little presentation here, you've seen me do that a, a lot. There's three things that I'm looking for, boys and girls. First of all, I'm looking for children that are picking up the blocks. Second, I'm looking for children that are putting the blocks back in the boxes. And third, I'm looking for children that are sitting down on the carpet with their listening ears out. That's an example of using number talk in instructions, holding up your fingers. If you're doing these things regularly as part of your routine in your classroom, you're doing great. And more than great, you're excellent. And the third criteria is that staff support the children to become aware of what printed numbers mean. So printed numbers, for example, in books, looking at the numbers on pages in the books, looking at numbers that are in and around your environment, for example, the date. Every early years classroom you should have the date written up somewhere on the board each day. Um, on the front door of the classroom when you're coming in, today's date, that's got numbers and words in it. Um, usually you would have a birthday chart in your room, which would obviously also have dates on it. You might have a number line. Well, you really should have a number line in your room. And talking about those, finding the number five on there, finding the number two on there, looking around the classroom where you see numbers in displays, highlighting those and talking to children about those. That really is excellent practice. So now what I want you to do is have a think about your practice and have a think about whether in your class you're meeting these three inadequate criteria, not much going on in terms of math or number, 
whether you're meeting the bare minimum, whether you have elements of good practice or consistently good practice across all of these criteria, or if you're already there in the excellence phase. And if you're not yet in excellent, what is it? What can you be doing? What can you change to strive for excellence?